He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Special welcome to one and all as we gather in God's house today. Uh, we continue to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior. Not only uh, celebrating that he's alive, but all the blessings that his resurrection does give to us. So our season of Easter continues today as God's people. And we thank the Lord for the blessings uh, that the Lord gives to us today. Uh, those blessings come to us through his word as we hear that read and preached today. We also receive the blessings of our Lord, or are we, we are reminded of those blessings in baptism today. Uh, today we thank and celebrate uh, the baptism of Carson Brandt. Uh, praying God's blessings upon the Brandt family today, extended family. We celebrate with all of you guys today. A uh, special welcome to our guests and visitors who are with us as well uh, as we celebrate uh, the life we have in our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus. So with that, may our worship service this morning be a blessing to us today. Right after our opening hymn this morning, we will have the rite of baptism. We'll follow that out of our hymnal that begins on page 268. So right at the end of our opening hymn, we have the rite of baptism. Then the rest of our service is printed in our bulletin folder for this day. So with that, let us join our voices as we sing our opening song, which is Children of the Heavenly Father. May the Lord bless us as we gather today. Children of the Heavenly Father, safely in His bosom gather, nestling bird nor star in heaven, such a refuge there was given. God His own doth tend and nourish, in His holy courts they flourish, from all evil things he spares them, in his mighty arms he bears them. Neither life nor death shall ever from the Lord his children sever. Unto them his grace he showeth, and their sorrows all he knoweth. Though he giveth or he taketh, God his children never forsaketh. It's the loving purpose solely to preserve them pure and holy. Again, the rite of baptism begins this morning on page 268. The congregation is asked to please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dearly beloved, Christ our Lord says in the last chapter of Matthew, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In the last chapter of Mark, our Lord promises, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. And the Apostle Peter has written, baptism now saves you. The Word of God also teaches that we are all conceived and born sinful and are under the power of the devil until Christ claims us as his own. We would be lost forever unless delivered from sin, death, and everlasting condemnation. But the Father of all mercy and grace has sent his Son, Jesus Christ, who atoned for the sin of the whole world, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. And how are you named? Carson, receive the sign of the Holy Cross, both upon your forehead and upon your heart, to mark you as one redeemed by Christ, the crucified. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, According to your strict judgment, you condemned the unbelieving world through the flood. Yet according to your great mercy, you preserved believing Noah and his family, eight souls in all. You drowned hard-hearted Pharaoh and all his host in the Red Sea. Yet you led your people Israel through the water on dry ground, foreshadowing this washing of your holy baptism. Through the baptism in the Jordan of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, you sanctified and instituted all waters to be a blessed flood in a lavish washing away of sin. We pray that you would behold Carson, 
according to your boundless mercy, and bless him with true faith by the Holy Spirit, that through this saving flood all sin in him, which has been inherited from Adam, in which he himself has committed sins, would be drowned and die. Grant that he would be kept safe and secure in the holy ark of the Christian church, being separated from the multitude of unbelievers, and serving your name at all times with a fervent spirit and a joyful hope, so that with all believers in your promise, he would be declared worthy of eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. From ancient times, the Christian church has observed the custom of appointing sponsors for baptismal candidates and catechumens. In the Evangelical Lutheran Church, sponsors are to confess the faith expressed in the Apostles' Creed and taught in the small catechism. They are, whenever possible, to witness the baptism of those they sponsor. They are to pray for them, support them in their ongoing instruction and nurture in the Christian faith, and encourage them for the faithful reception of the Lord's Supper. They are at all times to be examples to them of the holy life of faith in Christ and love for the neighbor. And as sponsors then, is it your intention to serve Carson as sponsors of the Christian faith? Yes, God enable you both to will and do this faithful and loving work and with his grace fulfill what we are unable to do. Amen. And hear the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. They brought young children to Jesus that he might touch them, but the disciples rebuked those who brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased and said to them, Let the little children come to me, and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. And he took them up in his arms, put his hands on them, and blessed them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. At this time, we pray the prayer the Lord has given us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And the Lord preserve your coming in, your going out from this time forth, and even forevermore. Amen. Congregation may be seated. At this time, I'll we'll ask you as sponsors to answer on Carson's behalf. Carson, do you renounce the devil? Do you renounce all his works? Do you renounce all his ways? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried? He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting? Yes. And Carson, do you desire to be baptized? Yes. And Carson, James Brandt, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And Carson, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with His grace to life everlasting. Amen. And receive this burning light to show that you have received Christ who is the light of the world. Live always in the light of Christ and be ever watchful for his coming. That you may meet him with joy and enter with him into the marriage feast, the land of his kingdom, which shall have no end. In holy baptism, God the Father has made you a member of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, an heir with us with all the treasures of heaven in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We receive you, Jesus' name, as our brother 
in Christ, that together that we might hear his word, receive his gifts, and proclaim the praises of him who called out of the darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. We welcome you in the name of the Lord. Congregation is asked to please stand for prayer. And let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God and Father, we thank and praise you that you have graciously preserved and enlarged your family and have granted Carson the new birth and holy baptism and made him a member of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir of your heavenly kingdom. We humbly implore you that as he has now become your child, you would keep him in his baptismal grace, that according to your good pleasure, he may faithfully grow to lead a godly life to the praise and honor of your holy name. And finally, with all your saints, obtain the promised inheritance in heaven through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. Sorry. You can return to your seats. Our service this morning continues with the words of our confession and absolution. I'll have the congregation stand. <laughs> so we continue. Brothers and sisters in Christ, our Lord Jesus has opened the way for us. Through him, we may draw near to our Father in heaven with openness and confidence. Since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. We may be open and honest as we confess our sins to God, our Father. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we know that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and we confess to you that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. Today we confess especially the doubts that creep into our minds and disturb our faith. Have mercy on us, Heavenly Father, for Jesus' sake. Speak to us again your reassuring word of forgiveness. Hear the good news again. Though we are sinners, we have one who speaks to the Father in our defense, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. For Jesus' sake, God forgives all our sins, also our times of doubting. His Holy Spirit gives us power to become His children now and forever. Take Him at His word again today. His Son died and rose again to be your Savior. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. We do believe, Lord, in your love for us. Dispel our doubts and unbelief. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, grant that we who have celebrated the Lord's resurrection may by your grace confess in our life and conversation that Jesus is Lord and God. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Congregation may be seated as we sing the song, He is Lord, and we will sing it through twice. He is Lord, He is Lord. He is risen from the dead, and He is Lord. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. You are Lord, You are Lord. You are risen from the dead, and You are Lord. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. He is Lord, He is Lord. He has risen from the dead and He is Lord. 
Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. You are Lord, you are Lord. You are risen from the dead and you are Lord. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Our first reading today is from Acts, chapter 5, verses 12 through 20. Now many signs and wonders were regularly done among the people by the hands of the apostles, and they were all together in Solomon's portico. None of the rest dared join them, but the people held them in high esteem. And more than ever, believers were added to the Lord, multitudes of both men and women, so that they even carried out the sick into the streets and laid them on cots and mats that as Peter came by, at least his shadow might fall on some of them. The people also gathered from the towns around Jerusalem, bringing the sick and those afflicted with unclean spirits, and they were all healed. But the high priest rose up, and all who were with him, that is, the party of the Sadducees, and filled with jealousy, they arrested the apostles and put them in the public prison. But during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the prison doors and brought them out and said, Go and stand in the temple and speak to the people all the words of this life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle is from Revelation chapter 1, verses 4 through 18. John to the seven churches that are in Asia. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead and the ruler of kings on earth, to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and made us a kingdom, priest to his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him, and all tribes of the earth will wail on account of him. Even so, amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. I, John, your brother and partner in the tribulation and the kingdom and the patient endurance that are in Jesus, was on the island of Patmos on account of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet saying, write what you see in a book and send it to the seven churches, to Ephesus and to Smyrna and to Pergamum and to Thyatira and to Sardis and to Philadelphia and to Laodicea. Then I turned to see the voice that was speaking to me, and on turning I saw seven golden lampstands. And in the midst of the lampstands, one like a son of man, clothed with a long robe and with a golden sash around his chest, and hairs of his head were white like wool, as white as snow. His eyes were like a flame of fire. His feet were like burnished bronze, refined in a furnace and his voice was like the roar of many waters. In his hand he held seven stars, and from his mouth came a sharp two-edged sword, and his face was like the sun shining in full strength. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead, but he laid his right hand on me, saying, Fear not, I am the first and the last, and the living one. I died, and behold, I am alive forevermore, and I have the keys of death and Hades. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand as we speak the Alleluia verse together. Alleluia. We know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. 
Alleluia. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Alleluia. Our gospel reading for this day comes to us from John chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of anyone, they are forgiven. If you withhold forgiveness from anyone, it is withheld. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails, and place my finger into the mark of the nails, and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, and see my hands, and put out your hand, and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written, so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Our service continues as we speak the words of our Christian faith, found in the wording of the Apostles' Creed, this may be found in the back of our hymnal. We confess together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, covered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The congregation may be seated. This time the children are invited forward for the children's message. Good morning, guys. How are you? How's everyone doing today? Kind of exciting day again today, right? We continue to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. Our Easter season continues. And so we're celebrating that Jesus is alive, everything that he gives to us. And so Easter continues today, even though we might not have as many people in church and things like that. But Easter continues. Jesus is alive. I wanted to ask you guys a question this morning. And the question is, would you believe me if I said that there's money in this box? So how many would believe me if I said there's money in this box? One? <laughs> One out of four. How about if I shake the box? And if you listen real closely, do you hear anything? I don't either. So now let me ask the question again. Would you believe me that there's money in this box? Now how many would say yes? Two, oh my, okay, very good, thank you for that. All right, so okay, how about if I do one more thing? How about if I show you? Would that help? To answer my question, if you believe there's money in this box or not? So, okay, so if I show you, will that help? Okay, so. So now let me ask the question again. 
do you believe me that there's money in this box? I heard a yes over here. And the answer is, there's money in the box, right? The whole idea of this is oftentimes we say seeing is believing. That is to say, if we see something, then we believe it. In other words, if I showed you the money in the box, would you say you believe it? Of course. And if I opened the box, showed you the inside of the cover too, and there was no money there, I have it taped on the cover here, if there's no money here, then you would say, no, I don't believe it because you see there's no money in the box, right? Right. Today, the Apostle Thomas, in our reading, did not believe that Jesus was alive. Why? Because he hadn't seen Jesus alive. The Apostle Thomas had seen Jesus die on the cross, Good Friday, had seen that Jesus was dead, and he says, unless I see Jesus alive and actually touch him, see him, I will never believe. Thomas was saying, unless I see it, like the money here, I won't believe. Again, Thomas was operating with the idea of seeing is believing. Well, did, Jesus, did Thomas see Jesus alive? Did you hear our reading for today? The answer is, yeah, yeah. So Jesus came to Thomas, said, I'm alive, look at me, touch me, feel the nail marks, I'm alive, I'm living as, Jesus, as, his, as Lord and Savior. Jesus is alive. And then Thomas says, I believe. And again, Jesus says, it's good that you believe that you see me, but blessed are those who don't see and yet believe. Okay? So my question to you is, do we see Jesus today? Can we say, hey, Jesus is over there, or he's sitting over here, or he's sitting right here. Can we see Jesus today? Yeah, the answer is no. We can't physically touch him. We can't physically see him. But yet we believe. And so the question is, why is that? Why is it? Why do we believe that Jesus is alive? Do you have any ideas? Why do we believe that Jesus is alive? How do we know that Jesus is alive? Trust me. Bible, right? The Bible tells us so. And that's exactly right. As we read the Bible, Thomas says, right? The apostle in a reading, Thomas says that Jesus is alive. The other apostles say that he's alive. And actually, did you know, at one time, over 500 people, at one time, saw Jesus alive? It's a lot of people more than the people we have in church today, for sure. Yeah. So a lot of people saw Jesus alive, and they wrote that down. And that's what God's Word is today. They were eyewitness accounts to see that Jesus is alive. Jesus himself tells us he's alive, right? In our readings for today, Jesus says he's alive, and so that is why we believe. And Jesus says we are blessed as we believe that. We are blessed as we believe in him that he's alive, as we have faith in him. Let's think of it in this way. So are we blessed by breathing in air? Are we blessed by breathing in air? Can we see it though? No. So we're blessed by breathing in the air that we can't see. How about this? Are we blessed with the calories in the food that we eat? Good. Yes. Um, but can we see those calories? No. But that food gives us calories, gives us energy, so we do the things we do. So again, we are blessed in believing those things which we can't see. Jesus again says today, we are blessed as we believe in him. Because as we believe in him, he forgives us our sins. Carson was baptized this morning. Jesus working through all that to take away his sins, takes away our sins. Jesus gives us his love. He gives us his provisions, things we need. In all those ways, we are blessed as we believe in Jesus, even though we can't see him. One last thing, one day we will see him. Yeah. One day he'll come again and show himself to us, make all things new, and we'll see Jesus forever. But in the meantime, we are blessed as we believe in him, even though we don't see him. Very good. Let's close our time with a word of prayer. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you that you are alive. Help us always trust your blessings for us. Amen. All right. Thanks, guys, for coming up. Our service this morning continues as we sing our sermon hong song, I Am the Resurrection. I am the resurrection and the life.
life. He who believes in me will never die. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live a new life. I have come to bring you have come to bring you life. You believe, then you shall live. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will never die. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live a new life. In my world all men shall come to know that is love that makes the spirit grow. If you believe, resurrection. in me will live a new life. In the words of today's epistle reading, grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and is to come and from the seven spirits who are before his throne and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead and the ruler of kings on earth. Amen. What comes to mind when you hear the word island? Do you think of white sand and palm trees? Do you think of blue skies and blue water? Or do you think of sunshine and a time to get away from the hustle and bustle of life? What comes to mind when you hear, hear the word island? Maybe on the other hand, a whole different set of thoughts come to, word, come to mind as you hear this word. Thoughts such as isolation or abandonment. Thoughts such as being cut off from loved ones or maybe the necessities of life. Thoughts such as being lost, forgotten about, and being utterly alone. What thoughts come to mind? when you hear the word island. In today's reading from the book of Revelation, the apostle John finds himself on an island, the island that is called Patmos. Now, I don't know if this island of Patmos has white sand or palm trees. I don't know if the water around this island is blue and clear. I suppose there are days that are sunny but the whole thing is to say that John, in today's reading, doesn't go on to describe the physical appearance of this island because that's not his concern. In other words, today, in today's epistle reading, John is not on vacation. Instead, as we look at the context of today's epistle reading, John is in exile. He's been exiled to the island of Patmos, and he is not there because he has committed some crime. He is not there because he has done something wrong. Instead, John is there because of his faith in Jesus. John writes in verse 9 today, I, John, your brother and partner in the tribulation and the kingdom, and the patient endurance that are in Jesus, was on the island called Patmos, on account of word of God and the testimony of Jesus. This is all to say that as John was living his life, he was living his life faithfully. He was living out his faith in his Lord and Savior. He was telling others about Jesus. He was living the way Jesus called him to live. 
But such faithfulness on John's part did not equal an easy life. For Jesus, or following Jesus, did not mean life would be a cakewalk or a rose garden. And not that Jesus promised this either. And actually, John writes in John's Gospel account in John 16.33, the words of Jesus that say, in this world, you will have tribulation. And so the context of today's reading finds John on this island going through his tribulations. He finds himself a long way from home. The island of Patmos is found in the Aegean Sea, which according to today's standards is about 1,200 miles by land from Jerusalem. This is all to say that John find himself, found himself isolated on an island all alone. And in such a setting, it would have been hard to find joy, to find hope, to find life itself. But it is in this isolated context that life finds John. John today hears someone speaking to him. He writes in verse 10, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet. And John also receives a vision. He says in verse 12, Then I turned to see the voice that was speaking to me, and on turning I saw. Who spoke to John? Who gave John this vision? None other than the risen Lord and Savior, Jesus. And as the risen Lord speaks and shows John a vision today, John is given life. Life in the risen and living Lord Life to see the big picture. But to start with, John sees Jesus as a son, like a son of man. Again, Jesus, John sees Jesus as a son of man. As we hear these words today, kind of in a sense, there should be bells and whistles going off in our head as we hear these words, like a son of man. The reason for this is that many times Jesus applies this title to himself 80 sometimes. He applies this title to himself throughout all the gospel accounts. And so as Jesus applies this title to himself, he doesn't do so just because he likes it, but he applies this title to himself because it tells us a lot about who he is. And so in summary, Jesus calls himself the Son of Man, for three reasons. Number one, Jesus refers to himself as the Son of Man because it points out the fact he is our representative. Number two, Jesus calls himself the Son of Man because he establishes God's kingdom for us. Number three, the title points to the fact that Jesus has authority over all of God's people. Again, Jesus calls himself the Son of Man because he's our representative, he establishes God's kingdom, he has authority over us to provide. Our text goes on to say, or John's experience here goes on to see a vision then of Jesus too. A vision that tells John who Jesus is. But first of all, John sees Jesus dressed in a long robe. This is the same robe that the high priests wore in the Old Testament. The high priest was the one who offered the blood offering on behalf of the people for the atonement of their sins. This is what Jesus does for us. He offers his blood on our behalf to atone for all our sins, to forgive us, to make us God's people. For this reason, Hebrews 4 calls Jesus our great high priest. John also sees Jesus wearing a golden sash. This points us back to the book of Daniel, where such an item equates to royalty. Next, John sees Jesus with white hair. This doesn't mean that Jesus is old and feeble. This means that Jesus commands respect, honor, and equates with a crown of splendor and also wisdom. 
Next, Jesus sees Jesus' eyes of flaming fire. This too has Old Testament connotations of strength to destroy all evil and to purify God's people. Moving on, John sees Jesus' feet like burnished bronze. This means that Jesus has strength to conquer his enemies. And finally then, John hears Jesus' voice. It's a voice of majesty, like many rushing waters that announce his arrival and also his glory. And if all this were not enough, again, John seeing Jesus as a son of man, seeing the physical depiction of who Jesus is, Jesus goes on to say these words, I have the keys of death in Hades. And we know how this works, right? It's like when you buy a vehicle and after signing all the papers and everything, the keys are placed in your hand or the key fob as it is today, right? Or when you buy a house, you go to the closing, signing all the papers, and then the keys to the front door are put in your hand. What does that mean? You are now the owner. That item is now your possession. You have all authority over it. This is exactly what Jesus is saying as he says, I have the keys of death and the grave. And so in today's text, while John is on this island, Jesus is giving him the big picture. The big picture that shows who Jesus is and what he has done. The big picture that finds life in Jesus. John says, when I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. But he laid his right hand on me saying, fear not. I am the first and last and the living one. This is to say that because of Jesus, John got up and he lived. John found life in the big picture of Jesus. As you and I go through life, oftentimes we might find ourselves on islands too. Not the nice tropical kind, unfortunately. But the kind where we are ridiculed and marginalized for our faith. But we live in a culture that is becoming increasingly hostile to the Christian faith. A culture where we are oftentimes told, keep your faith to yourself. Or maybe keep your beliefs Inside here, right? Inside the church doors. Of course, as Christians, we don't have this option. Not because we want to be spiteful. and Not because we want to exercise our First Amendment rights. But because our Lord says to us, Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. Our Lord says, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and even to the end of the earth. And so it might be hard to live out our faith in school. It may be hard to live out our faith in college. Maybe it's hard to live out our faith in our workplace today. And how about this one? It may be especially hard to live out our faith in our own families too. But these are all places where we are pressured to go with the flow, where we are pressured to bend the rules, where we are pressured just to fit in. And the result then is that there may be times where you feel like you're on an island, like you're all alone, like you're isolated, going it alone. And in such a position, you might experience where life narrows down. It closes in, and soon there is no joy. Soon there is no hope. And you might even say, soon there is no life. But it is on our island where our Lord speaks to us today. He shows us that we are not alone there. 
And like John, our Lord shows us who he is today. He shows us what he has done for us. For he shows us the big picture. During this Easter season, we not only celebrate the fact that Jesus lives, but we celebrate what Jesus has done for us. In verse 5 for today, John writes that Jesus has freed us from our sins by his blood and made us a kingdom, priests to his God and Father. This means that in Jesus we are God's people. We live in his care. We don't go it alone. And this also means that Jesus goes with you. And death and the grave cannot hold you. Cannot hold you. Because you are in his hands. And in his hand are the keys of death. The keys of Hades. The keys of the grave. Jesus lives and in him so do you. Jesus is victorious, and in him so are you. And so today's text calls us to live with this big picture in mind, especially when we are on our islands. For the good news is that Jesus is with us all the time. Our text reminds us today that he is in the midst of his people. As Carson is baptized today, again, Jesus is working among us giving him all the gifts of his life, death, and resurrection. As we recall our baptism today, those gifts are ours too. Forgiveness of sins, power over death and the devil, eternal life, children of God, receivers of the Holy Spirit, the list goes on. As Jesus speaks to us through his word today, he speaks to us words of life, words of faith, words of wisdom, words of strength, And whenever we celebrate and receive the Lord's Supper, Jesus is there too, giving us his very body, giving us his very blood, giving us his very life. Without a doubt, our risen and reigning Lord resides among us as his people. But there's one other thing that we can't forget as God's people. And that would be to say that when we find ourselves on our island, whatever that island might be, however that island might come about, we cannot forget the family that we have been given. And this doesn't mean just our biological family. This means the family of God that we have been given. Whether we realize it or not, Jesus has made us one in him. So as you look around yourself here this morning, again, we see our brothers and sisters in Christ. And this is important because when it comes to our islands, we are often tempted to think, well, no one's going through what I'm going through, which may be true. But it's also true that all of us are going through something. And it's also true that in Christ we can all go through our somethings together. Together with Christ in our midst. Together with Christ where we find life. Life has a way of narrowing down. And so Jesus gives us the big picture today. He shows us who he is. He shows us what he does for us. He gives us the big picture of life. Because when life narrows down, your reigning and risen Lord says to you today, Fear not. I am the first and the last, the living one. I died. Behold, I am alive forevermore, and I have the keys of death and Hades. And because of Jesus, you can look forward to not only the day but an eternity in a place called paradise. In Jesus' name, amen. May the peace of God that passes all understanding guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Our service this morning continues as we collect our offering. Once again, as the offering is collected, members and guests are asked to please sign the record of fellowship forms found near the center aisle.
Baptist service this morning continues with the prayer of the church on page 3. Please stand. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Glorious Lord, we continue to offer our alleluias because Christ has risen from the dead. By your spirit working through word and sacrament, continue to fill our hearts, minds, and lives with the joy of the redeemed. Because Jesus lives, help us live for you, in you, and through you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, give us strength to live out our faith, especially when we are criticized for it and find ourselves isolated as a result of it. Help us always know that you stand in our midst to provide for us when we feel alone. And help us always to know that you give us brothers and sisters in Christ who stand by our side and walk with us. Give us patient endurance until you welcome us home at the end of this life. Help us live in the world, but not of the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Risen Lord, we thank you for your word today that reveals to us your power and dominion and your reign. We praise you for who you are, and we give you thanks for what you have done. Thank you for showing us that you hold the keys of death and Hades. And may such a vision give us all peace, contentment, and confidence as we live in you. Lord, in your mercy. Great physician, even the shadows of your apostles brought healing to the afflicted people of Jerusalem. As we rest under the shadow of your wings, grant health and healing to your afflicted servants. Especially we pray again for Claire, Bev, Ruby, Robin, Kenny, Darlene, Roger, Carol, and Ryan. Comfort them with your presence, sustain them in your promises, and give them faith that does not waver. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, as our Lutheran Church Missouri Synod celebrates its 175th anniversary on April 26th, we give you thanks for your sustaining gifts. Among them, most especially do we thank you for the gift of Jesus, who alone is our salvation. By his death, you have atoned for our sins. By his resurrection, you have justified us. And by his word and Holy Spirit, you have brought the gospel of peace to us. For all these reasons and many more, may all the glory be not unto us, but unto your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, we pray for our families today of Chevy Hansen, Jeff and Angie Hansen, Cantrell, Cammie, and Devin Han Harrison, that they might continue to grow in their faith by turning away from sin, receiving your grace, and living according to your word. Give them what they need to glorify you in their respective vocations. Fill their lives with well-being and peace as they live in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we continue to pray that you would send rain upon our land. Lord, we know that you are in control, so we look to you for our need. Lord, we also pray for the war that continues, praying that you would bring it to an end and stop the killing of lives and destruction. All these things we pray, and whatever else you know that we need, we ask it in the name of Jesus, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Having prayed the Lord's Prayer in the Baptist rite, we continue with the closing collect. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have again refreshed our spirits through your saving word. In your mercy, strengthen us through our time of worship together in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. We pray in the name of the King who came in loneliness to serve, to save, and who now rules over all things at your right hand. And he will come again in glory to take us to himself, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And receive the blessing of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. We sing our closing song, Majesty. Worship his majesty unto Jesus be all glory, power, and praise. Majesty, kingdom authority, flow from his throne unto his own. 
whose anthem reigns. So exalt, lift up on high the name of Jesus. Magnify, come glorify Christ Jesus the King. Majesty, worship his majesty. Jesus who died, now glorified, King of all kings. So exalt, lift up on high the name of Jesus. Magnify, come glorify. Christ Jesus the King. Majesty, worship His majesty. Jesus who died, now glorified, King of all kings. Please be seated. It's a joy to worship the Lord with you today.